Today I want to talk about the topic of test code coverage and yes I know that's quite a topic and especially what is a reasonable way to use this in an enterprise project. So usually you might argue about what is a good test code coverage number or percentage, right? Like should we cover 80% of our tests or more or less? But I think that's not the perfect discussion to have. So rather it actually makes sense to have a look at our overall test suite, including our system tests and acceptance tests, and then see how much we actually cover. And today I want to show you a way to turn this around a little bit to look at our system tests and acceptance tests first and trying to get the coverage of our Quarkus application. I use a tool called Jacoco and if you have a look at the Quarkus guides, this is actually supported. So there is a way how to use Quarkus together with this Jacoco dependency. You can set this up and run it in your test. But however, that's actually not what I want to show you. I want to turn the whole thing upside down and run our application in a similar way like you would run in production, just locally, and run Jacoco as an agent. How this looks is that I have my coffee shop example and then it works as follows that I have my application here in the middle and I have my system test just using the same endpoints and then I see later on how much I cover of my code. So an agent will be included just right here, a JVM agent, and then with the rest of the examples of the scenarios, I see how much coverage we have. So for that, I use a tool called Jacoco for a library for Java code coverage, which is quite a de facto standard. And with that, I use its JVM agent. How this works, I use my um, coffee shop testing example, and you can, as always, get all the code on GitHub. So I have the two other containers, what you saw in the diagram, the database and the uh, barista endpoint system already up and running. And now what I do in my coffee shop example, I now run my application that I just built uh, using Maven. So I do the typical uh, Maven build first, and then I run the whole thing using an agent. So how this works in the example of Quarkus is that I can start the whole thing in the JVM mode, for example, on the target Quarkus app, Quarkus run, and including a Java agent. So that is then the example that runs my Jacoco agent, includes the runtime jar. How to get this is, well, easy. You can just download it uh, on the website, or if you're even lazier than that, like I am, you can actually misuse your IDE to basically say you include a dependency and you update your Maven profile and then it will just download it. But just as I said, I would not like to have this in my project. This is just like standalone, so I don't need that. If I now run my application, it would start it up in a similar way as usual. So here we saw now that Quarkus starts up as always. And now actually there is this JVM agent being active but it doesn't matter for us. So we can just run um, our application and the system tests in the same way. So I can um, still access my application and it will then just use all of these method invocations to track the coverage. And now if I think about it, well, if I now run my test suite of my system tests, run it against the application, then ideally I want to have a high coverage, right? Otherwise it means that my code is not being used or that I don't have enough tests. So for that, we're going to see this. I'm going to run this example now from my system test perspective. And again, if you have a look at the GitHub example, you will see the system test project. And then I can run the Maven a verify step with pointing this to the correct running system. And basically what I want is that I now run my whole test. This now takes a moment. And now we see that all the tests have been executed. So I just quickly skipped over this part because the UI tests take a few seconds here. And now, well, all the system tests are green. So that's first of all a good news. But what I'm actually interested in is the coverage here. So how much of my code, of my production code in my coffee shop was actually executed? For that, I can now just stop my application again here using control C. And now what I actually see in my directory is that we have this Jacoco exec file. And with this, that actually just gathered all the data. With this, I can, uh, um, I can create a report uh, using a Maven um, Jacoco plugin. 
So this Maven plugin to use the record, uh, report and that specific data file. And again, you can place this from you know the outside. You don't have to include all of this in your Palm XML. And I think this actually makes sense to not just clutter it um, up for things that you don't want to use all the time, right? So you could execute this, for example, in a CI CD pipeline or somewhere else or just as a one time job and then, you know, not include it all the time. So with this, I can just um, now generate my site or my uh, report for it. And under target site, Jacoco, I now see this generated report and I can have a look at this in the browser. And now I see that this actually includes the packages of my application. And now, first of all, I want to make sure that the coverage is kind of high, right? Like especially for all the classes that executes on my code. So here, for example, I see that the entity classes are not that high. So for example, this might mean that some getters and setters are not really executed, but that also depends how my code is being used, whether this um, is being used uh, by reflection or some other mechanism. But let's go back to a boundary, for instance. So my orders resource, that's quite interesting. This is a JAX REST resource, and now I, um, I expect most of them to be executed. But here we see for create order, get orders, that is the case, but update order with the HTTP put, that, for instance, apparently is not being used from within my system test. And this now tells you these type of marks that either you have that code, code that is not being used, or your system tests are not as exhaustive as they should be. So for example, you might include another test case that tests this endpoint. And the same is true for all of the other methods and we can have a look at some other code. So this is the entry point of my uh, business use cases, this coffee shop. And again, you see here that this update order is kind of missing. So this code wasn't executed. And you can just explore this now by having a look at all of your classes in your project. And I think this is a quite interesting way to use Jacoco in such a way where we're actually not using the direct code connection from the plugin, but by using it as an agent and then run the same system tests. As always, you can try out these examples on GitHub. And if you enjoyed watching this video, I would really appreciate a like and if you subscribe to my channel. And thanks a lot for watching.